and gentlemen, and welcome to Solusi University Church. We are discussing the theme of crucibles. But before we get down to our topic for today, which is lesson number four, we want to invite the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and guidance as we are going to study today. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the gift of life. We thank you for the lesson that you are going to share with us. We thank you for the wisdom that you're going to give us associated with this topic. Please be with us, dear Lord. This is our humble prayer. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. In the academic world, especially tertiary education, we are well known as prerequisite courses. Then we are well known as compulsory courses. Prerequisite and compulsory. You cannot get your undergraduate degree or your master's degree or your postgraduate or your PhD if you have not satisfied the requirements of the degree, i.e. you have not done the prerequisite courses, nor have you done the compulsory courses. In our syllabus for heaven and salvation, there is also a prerequisite. There is also a compulsory. And this theme that we're looking at today is going to look at one of these prerequisites and compulsory courses, and that is the crucibles, the crucibles. It's a painful thing to discuss, but it is a reality of salvation. Every child of God will have to go through a crucible one way or another. But the good news is you don't go through this crucible alone. Just like a student does not go through university alone, he has the guidance of the lecturer, the professor, the academician to walk through these crucibles up to the exam stage, up to the graduation stage. Our examiner in this case is Jesus Christ himself. Our topic for today, lesson number four, seeing the goldsmith's face. Seeing the goldsmith's face. Jesus Christ, I want to preempt here and now, is the goldsmith we are talking about here. The question that you want to ask yourself is, what face are we looking for and where should we see it? What face are we looking for and where should we see it? A story is told about a, a group of students, group of pupils, you may want to call them, who went for a school trip. And they went to a particular a uh, goldsmith. A goldsmith is somebody who, has a, who is in the business of taking uh, gold ore and converting it into gold. So when they were in the, the, the workshop, they saw the goldsmith putting some very dirty, ruddy, horrible looking stones into very, very hot flaming fire. And they asked him, what are you doing? The, the goldsmith says, I want to remove these dirty things from the stones, these impurities, because I want the gold to come out. Okay, the, the student said, but how will you know when it's ready? Are you not running the risk that you will burn the actual product? And the goldsmith says with a smile on his face, I will know when it is ready. How, they said, when I see my face in the gold. When I see my face in the gold. The book is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Paul has this to say, But we, with unveiled face, beholding as it were a mirror the glory of the Lord, and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So Paul here is saying that as growing Christians, there will be a transformation that takes place in our lives. The transformation has to do with moving from one stage of our Christianity to another stage of the Christianity, which he calls from glory to glory. And who helps you go through glory to glory? It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Our Sunday lesson talks about in his image, in his image. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, when God formed you, when God formed me, we were formed in the image of God, in the likeness of God, both in terms of our character and in terms of our physical stature and distribution. God formed us. He made us from the dust of the, of the earth. He made us so that we may what? May worship him and follow his dictates and statutes. Alas, what has happened? Corruption has taken place. We are no longer in the image of the Lord. What has happened? Sin has taken over. 
sin has now uh, become king in our lives. And we are not as pure as we ought to be. We have accumulated the dirt. We have accumulated the dust. And now the Lord God, the goldsmith in this, in this context, has to take us from the quarry of the world and put us into the fires. What is his intention? It's certainly not to burn us. That's not his intention. He loves us too much for that. His intention is for us to reflect his image. And when we reach that point where we've reflected his image, out of the fire he pulls us. We will be the treasured gold he is looking for. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 has this to say. Romans 8 verse 29 has this to say. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Paul is saying here, as I had indicated at the beginning, that for every degree qualification, there are prerequisites and compulsory courses that we have to go through. Paul is now bringing out that thought by saying, we have to go through. We are predestined to go through this experience so that we reflect the image of the Son of God. What does uh, the book of Ephesians say? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, has something similar. To the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers of heaven, of heavenly places, might be known the church and the manifold wisdom of God. It is the intention of God that we be known worldwide, that we worship God, even though, even though we go through these crucibles. Why is that the case? Because we have to reflect the image of God in the heat of things. Let me give you an, uh, uh, another story. The story is of a, a, a sacrificial lamb. In the olden days, the priest would take the lamb, kill it, and uh, put it on the altar of burnt offerings, and a fire would be torched underneath to consume the lamb. The quick question that I would ask you, and you should ask yourself, when that dead lamb is burning on the altar, will it react? Will it kick? Will it make noise? Will it complain? The answer is no. The reason why it will not do those things is because the lamb is dead. Even though it is being burnt, it is dead. If you and I are dead in Christ, if you and I have surrendered ourselves completely to the will of Jesus Christ, then even in the heat of our crucibles, we will surrender to Jesus because he's our Lord. This now brings us to faith amid the refining fire. Faith amid the refining fire. What does Hebrews say about this thing? Hebrews 11 verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Here is Moses who had to compare two situations. The wrath, of Mo, the wrath of Pharaoh versus the wrath of God. He knew who God was, even though he grew up in Egypt. He knew who Pharaoh was, and he knew which of these two monarchs was more powerful. And he made a decision to say, I would rather be on the side of God, because what I see coming is going to what? Destroy this country. I do not want to be there. But for that to happen, Moses had to go through 40 years of experience with God, 40 years of experience in the wilderness, 40 years of experience of crucibles, not knowing what life holds for him. He grew up in Egypt, in the palaces of luxury. But now, 40 years in the wilderness, going through trial of a making done by the Lord. For what purpose? So that he will lead God's people out of Egypt. He will lead God's people as Christ is leading us today. Job 23, verse 1 to 10, I'll summarize the story. Basically, Job is complaining. He is saying, the problems before me, the problems behind me, I cannot see them. But at the end of the day, I do know this one thing, that my God is living and my God is protecting me. This is faith in the midst of a, of a, uh, of a fiery furnace. Can you and I exhibit similar faith? Do we have that kind of a faith when things are now bad? 
Your workplaces, people are abusing you. Your school environment, kids are teasing you. Your home environment being rejected. In the heat of these things, do you still have the faith that God is calling you to have? Jesus' last words. Jesus' last words. Before the crucifixion of Christ, Jesus gave a number of parables, more specifically the sheep and the goats. I want to pay attention on that parable a little bit here. The sheep and the goats were separated because of one thing, their character. If you read the parable further, it says, you were good to me because you visited me in prison. You were good to me because you fed me when I was hungry. You were good to me because you clothed me. The question was asked, when did you do all of these things? You did all these things when you did them to your neighbors in suffering. Part of the crucible experience that we have to go through is giving up the little that we have for the benefit of somebody else. God is calling us to make such sacrifices. Giving up what you have for the benefit of somebody else is a call of Christ. How does this now work for us in this day and age today? We're not going to just focus on what the Bible says historically. We want to look at what the Bible means to you and me today. Will I give up the little I have? Will I allow Christ to take me through the furnace, not to destroy me, but to help me reflect his image, his character? Will I allow, will I allow Christ to take me through a moment of inconvenience, a moment of, of, of suffering, a moment of despair, of embarrassment? Will I allow that all for the purposes of glorifying his name? so that the whole world may see that even though this man is going through trials, he still worships God. The same way Job worshipped God when things were bad, lost his ten children, lost his cattle, his wife was abusing, or not abusing, but rather his wife was calling him to curse God. He still worshipped the Lord. The question both for you and me today, do we have the same level of faith? As I come to the conclusion of our discussion, we want to look at you and me in the community setup. One thing is for sure, we are not called to be in isolation. No matter how much you want to try and say you're going to live like a hermit and stay in your house, community, society will not allow that to happen. God calls, calls you to go into the community for a number of reasons. Number one, the obvious one, reflect his image. Let the community see who Christ is because of the way you live. Let the community see who Christ is because of the sufferings you go through for his name, not for the sufferings you go through because of your ill, Ill, Ill behaviors. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through to 16, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers. Why? Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You have this job. Which one it is, I am not sure. You know it as an individual. But your job is to do what? Perfect the saints and edify the body of Christ. Verse 13. Till we all, all meaning the whole community, you part of it, till we all are in the unity of the faith, in the knowledge of the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. We will all go through this because it is a requirement. We will all go through these challenges because we have to. Not because God wants to destroy us, but because God wants us to be like him. Ladies and gentlemen, our short discussion ends here today. I want you to take this home. I want this thing to, to settle down in your minds as you think through this thing. What does God want out of me? What does God want me to learn when I go through these trials? Whether the trials are of my own making or the trials are of an external making, what does God want me to learn? May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful lesson a difficult one, but a beautiful one nonetheless. Please grant us strength to go through the necessary crucibles that we need to go through. Grant us strength to overcome them because we know you mean well for us. 
This is our humble prayer in your mighty name. Amen.